All right, welcome back to Fast Gadgets. Today we're going to talk about a topic that is Linux based for those of you who are asking for more Linux videos. And I think it's an important one to talk about, especially if you have an interest in becoming some type of IT professional, whether it's a systems analyst, a server manager, security specialist, whatever it is that you're interested in. If you're going to get into IT, you definitely need to know a lot about Linux. We're going to talk about what my recommendations are specifically today, why you shouldn't distro hop. So let's get right into it. Now, I want to lay down a couple of ground rules. The first thing is, I'm going to make an assumption that you really want to gain the most knowledge about Linux that you can. Please do understand, I know many of you want me to call it GNU Linux or GNU Richard Stallman Linux or whatever it is you want me to call it, but I want to let you know right now, if you're interested or serious about becoming a professional and using Linux somewhere in the industry, the minute you correct somebody that you're working with or working for and you tell them that it's not called, it's not really Linux because Linux is only the kernel, okay? You're basically making yourself look like an idiot and nobody will take you seriously after that. Everybody in the industry calls it simply Linux. So whether you like it or not, I guess you should get used to it. If you want to do it in your own personal space and with your friends, that's perfectly fine if you enjoy correcting them. But I just want to give you a dose of reality. You're not going to be able to do something like that when you're out there working and it really makes you look foolish. Okay. Let's get on with it. So here's the issue with learning Linux and why distro hopping actually causes a problem. Linux is not really one giant amorphous ball of information. It's not something that you can say, well, I installed Ubuntu and I played around on the desktop for a half hour and I think it's fair to say that this is representative of all Linux. And we know that's not the case at all. Just look at Ubuntu. The desktop is actually in the process of changing over to GNOME 3X. And that's quite a difference for somebody who's used to the Unity interface. So learning the newer interface, GNOME, that Ubuntu is going to use is an imperative if you want to be in desktop support for Linux. It's not common then for some of the information that you're learning in one distro to transfer to another distro necessarily, okay? Some may use different systems in them, some may use different desktops, some may have a slightly different command structure, thinking uh, of Ubuntu versus, say, Fedora or Red Hat. There's definitely a slightly different command structure that you need to know, especially when you compare even older versions of Red Hat with, of course, say, Fedora, which is more cutting edge. There are definitely a lot of differences. So here's the thing. If you learn one version of Linux and stick with it, you're going to become specialized in that version of Linux. You kind of need to know what your reasoning is for learning Linux. If it's strictly for use of the desktop in gaming, say for example, Ubuntu might be great. It might be the system you want to use. If we're talking about server management and learning about server structure, Fedora might be the one that you want to focus on. Does that mean you can't use the desktop? Absolutely not. I'm using the desktop back here right now on Fedora, but it does give you the command structure in system D to help you understand a little bit more how Linux works for servers, okay? If you really want to be server specific, you're going to want to go with something like CentOS because CentOS is basically a bit for bit copy of the source code rebranded CentOS instead of Red Hat OS. So it really does make some sense to use CentOS if you're interested in supporting servers. The next reason why you really don't want to distro hop. If you distro hop, you're going to become a jack of all trades, master of none. So you're going to know a little bit about all the distros, but you're not going to know anything specific that helps you understand one specific distro and what it is used for. So again, many of the distros, they all try to basically 
have usability in all the different facets, but one over another will give you a particular set of services or functions that it does better than the other. If I was really just looking for a desktop management or a desktop environment or maybe a development environment, if you want to do coding, Ubuntu wouldn't be a bad choice because it does have a lot of packages that work best. And quite frankly, any of the desktop apps seem to work better on Ubuntu than they do on anything else. So consider that. If you're looking strictly for servers, once again, then you're going to look at a different distro. But if you don't concentrate on one distro for a while, again, you're just a jack of all trades, but you're a master of none. You don't really know the depth of that particular distribution. Like it or lump it, you've got to learn the command line. And this is very unpopular. Most people tell me, you know, they don't like to see the command line in my videos. The problem is Linux was built on the command line. The GUI was an afterthought. And this goes for BSD as well, and to some extent Unix. And if you're going to encounter any type of server environment, which is likely if you're in IT, there is none that I can think of that bother to use the GUI. It's very, very rare. So if you don't learn the command line, it's going to be a problem for you. And quite frankly, if you want to be able to do tweaks and changes, you're going to need to learn the command line, even if you have the graphical interface installed. Everybody will tell you the minute you have a problem with Linux, they're going to ask you to go look at the system log and see what the error is. Because if you get that specific error, that code and message is far better than my app won't launch. Why? Even if you're on one distro versus another, you've got to learn the command line. And you, again, talking about specialization, each distro, and there's groupings, okay? So, for example, Ubuntu, Debian, they're going to have a different command line structure. There are common commands, we're going to talk about that in a minute, but there are some specific commands that you would want to know and understand how to use. Same for Arch and any Arch-based distros. Same for Red Hat or Fedora-based distros. Makes sense. Somebody tells me, I don't like Fedora, but I like Linux Mint. Linux Mint is very nice. It's very polished, right? Uh, but you would want to understand a little bit about the command line structure so you can get yourself out of some problems if you run into some issues and need to use the command line which leads me to the next thing. Talking about being a jack of all trades, one of the best things you can do if you want to be able to uh, move between Linux distro, somebody says to you, hey, by the way, um, we actually use Debian here. We don't use Red Hat for our servers. And you say, well, okay, it's going to be a bit of an issue. I'll have somewhat of a learning curve, but one of the ways that you can work around that is to learn at least perfunctorily, okay? It's not like you have to know them perfectly, the common set of commands. And there's at least 50 to 100 that I can think of that are the common commands that you should know and understand. PS is one, for example. Uh, being able to list processes and using a tool like grep, uh, which I call the best office assistant that you can ever have, to go out there and filter for a specific process. Firefox is hung. Uh, I'm going to use PS, the command, and I'm going to grep it and look for specifically the word Firefox. Once I find that process ID, I can actually kill off that particular process ID. And there's another thing, thinking of common commands. Kill, for example, is a command that in all reality, you would really want to um, understand that command because there's different levels. You can, you know, kill nicely, ask a command to close down, or you can kill it with impunity, and it's done and gone. Now, if it's a database, you don't want to have to do that unless you really, really need to, or you could cause problems. So knowing those common commands makes you more valuable if you're looking to, again, work in the industry and work on Linux systems, whether they're desktop systems or servers. So talking more about commands and why they're important, one of the best things you can do is learn the VI editor. It's also called Vim. You'll hear it called VI or Vim, which stands for VI Improved. 
that particular editor, although it's difficult to learn initially, it, you'll see that it's very, very powerful. And the coolest thing is it can be used on any Linux distribution, any BSD distribution, and any Unix distribution. What I'm saying is that particular editor is actually installed on all systems. So again, learning those commands that are useful, that are common among all systems, enhances your knowledge set in Linux no matter what distro you're on. You do want to learn the distro specific command sets. That's important too. And again, I'm not saying that you should become an expert or professional, but you at least want to have some knowledge. So here's the bottom line. If you're not distro hopping and you're concerned that you're not learning about other distros, what can you do? Well, we've talked about a couple of things. Learn the common commands. Later, maybe after you feel comfortable with one distro, learn those particular commands that are specific to that distro. Then, if you have the time, should you experiment with other distros? Yes, absolutely. Experiment meaning if you don't like a distro and it doesn't like what you do within 30 minutes, you trash it and install a new distro and say, Linux, Fedora sucked, so I went ahead and installed uh, Linux Mint. It's much, much better. I really like it. Do you like it because it kept you away from the command line? And when you find a problem that you can't surpass, you then decide to go ahead and delete that distro and install another one because you heard it was easier? Well, I mean, easy is relative, right? If you think of Windows, you've had to learn a lot of tricks of the trade to get Windows working well, and to some extent Mac as well, but certainly Windows. And your knowledge set is specialized with Windows, and that's why you hear many people say, I can't stand Linux, it's so different. I know everything I need to know about Windows. It makes sense. You're specialized in Windows. Should you experiment? Now, with experimentation, I want to define that. I'm saying that when you are experimenting, you're doing a couple of things. One, maybe you're installing a virtual machine, or two, you're using a live USB, which is great because you can run it on your actual hardware and get an idea of what it's like and what applications work well, what you can install, does networking work. All these different little functions and features of a distribution that really are best tested on actual hardware. If you want to get your feet wet quickly, a virtual machine is awesome, and so is the live USB. Each has kind of a certain mission, but they're a little bit different, right? Because if you're already in a certain system and you decide, hey, I think I want to learn about this particular distro really quick, virtualize it so you can still continue your work in your main system. If, on the other hand, you want to test hardware and learn how it functions with hardware, especially if you're a desktop user, you're probably want to get, going to want to use a live USB. So that is my take on distro hopping. I don't think I've missed anything. If you have any comments, leave them below and let me know what you think. But you really have to think hard about the whole concept of distro hopping. When you're deciding to jump off a distro, there's two reasons why I usually don't do it. One is because I've heard it's the latest and greatest or two, because I'm angry because there's something wrong with my current distro and I can't figure out how to fix it. There's a good chance if you trash it and install a new distro, it probably won't work anyway, or if it does, you might have introduced some new problem that you have to work around. Case in point, I'm testing a C920 camera right now. So I'm gonna turn this around so you can have a look. So I've got the C920 camera set up. I've got my microphone set up here right there and I'm trying to learn and see if this particular camera will work well and I can use it eventually to replace it for most of my main shooting. I have the Galaxy Note 4 here that I use but I want to replace it. Well something ironic happens if I close down OBS and for whatever reason if I unplug the camera and plug it back in OBS can no longer see it and the only thing that fixes it I've tried just a general log off, I've tried a reboot, is powering off, and I flip the switch on my plug bar and turn it back on. And when I boot back up, it's back again and everything's working great. So should I just give up and throw in the towel and be angry about it? I don't really think so. I think I should try to learn why it is that that does what it does. 
Now I have a simple workaround, right, which is do the reboot. It works good enough. The camera still works and I can do what it is I need to do. However, I still want to learn. I want to grow my knowledge on Fedora as much as I can. So I do desktop work in Fedora and I also do command line level work when I need to fix something. If you watch any of my previous videos, you saw the command line I used to disable the IIO sensor. And I had to learn a particular initialization system that belongs to Fedora and Red Hat, which is System D, which is not popular, by the way. But just because it's not popular doesn't mean it's something you shouldn't learn, mainly because in the industry, especially with servers, it's big. And you make a good amount of money working on Linux servers. So I want to also mention with servers, if you're used to the GUI, most servers have no GUI. So you're not going to be able to use the GUI and you can't rely on it, not like you can with Windows. So assume if you're going to work on servers or you're taking a job where you're going to be doing Linux work on servers, there will be no GUI. So you have to learn basically everything you need to know, which reminds me, if you decide to install a certain distro, do it command line only, maybe in a virtual machine, and learn everything you can so you understand the differences between a non-GUI and a GUI distribution and how it works and what commands you really need to know. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. Hopefully this information was useful to you. I'm not discouraging people from trying different distros. I'm not even discouraging you from saying, hey, I don't like that distro anymore. I'm going to go with this distro because it may come to that, and that's cool. It's perfectly fine. It's up to you. I'm just saying, don't distro hop. If you find yourself changing your distro and saying, this is the ultimate Linux distro every single week, it's problematic. Now, I've seen some other YouTubers do that every time they start up a new video. I've changed to this flavor of Unix and it's, or Linux, excuse me, and it's the most awesome distro ever. And I'm going to use this one forever. And then a week later, they're on a new one. It cracks me up. But I understand their excitement at the same time because it is exciting to find a new distro and see if it helps you out or works with um, works around certain problems that you had before. If you enjoyed this video, do the usual brouhaha that they always say at the end of the videos. Like, subscribe, and share. If you really liked it, drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. And don't tell me to call it GNU Linux. Have a good one. See you next time on Fast Gadgets. And happy Thanksgiving.